Thanks for being with us here on Court TV Live. I'm your midday host, Julie Grant. So we are waiting for court to resume in Los Angeles, California in the Jinx murder trial. In the meantime, we want to get you up to date on the case of murdered University of Iowa student Molly Tibbetts. Defendant Christian Bahina Rivera was found guilty of the crime of first degree murder in June, but has not yet been sentenced. As we've been telling you, his defense team put forth a brand new theory last week on who killed Molly Tibbetts. The defense implicating two childhood friends as alternate suspects in this case. And we're now hearing from those friends. Their names are Gavin Jones and Dalton Hansen. They both come forward saying they did not have anything to do with Tibbetts' death. Gavin Jones told the Associated Press that he's eager to talk to investigators and clear his name. He said, and I'm quoting directly here, the cops haven't talked to me. No one has talked to me. I wasn't involved in anything. I have alibis and everything. I'm just waiting for someone to come talk to me, end quote. Now, this comes as the judge in the Bahara, Bahina Rivera murder trial has now weighed in on the motion to compel. That was filed by the defense team wanting the state to release evidence on another investigation separate and apart from Molly Tibbetts' case. Well, that motion was denied by the court. Judge Joel Yates, in his ruling, said in part, and I'm quoting, the defense's first request regarding evidence related to sex trafficking investigations involving James Lowe or others was overly broad and would likely contain confidential information about a variety of people. And defendants' examination of those investigations would be nothing more than a fishing expedition, end quote. The judge has also ordered the hearing on the motion for a new trial and motion and arrest of judgment to take place next week on July 27th. So, of course, we will keep you posted on that. Still with me this hour, former federal prosecutor Bianca Ford and municipal court judge Phyllis Collins. Bianca, I want to go to you first on this one, please. Um, share your thoughts with us on, on this defense team, what they're doing. Uh, it seems like anything and everything they can uh, to try to prevent uh, their client from serving any prison time, uh, from having this conviction. And, and we know we're at the stage in the game post-conviction. And uh, it, it seems like they're coming up with all these different things and, and nothing is very successful right now. I, I want your thoughts on it all, please. Sure. You know, I, I think a motion for a new trial, given the significance of the information that recently came out, is the right procedural tactic to use in this case. And, you know, I have to say, as a former federal prosecutor, I was really disappointed in the approach of the prosecutors in this in this case that rejected sort of going back and, and trying to figure out what really happened here. The job of the prosecutor is not just to bring about a, a conviction or to impose, not to impose methods that don't bring about proper convictions, but to make sure that the conviction that is imposed is just. And I think given the nature of the of the evidence that's come through here, potentially even 80 evidence, and I write about this in my book, Prosecuted Prosecutor, I think it's important for the judge to really get to the bottom of it. And it sounds like the judge is going to do just that um, with this motion that the court will be hearing soon. Well, 